Dantzig simplex algorithm. So what problem does this algorithm solve? The simplex algorithm solves linear programs. This is a problem in which we are asked to find the maximum or minimum value of a linear objective function subject to one or more linear constraints. Here is an example. Here our objective function is minus 100x minus 40y minus 120 z. And these are our linear constraints. We want to find the largest or smallest value of the objective function called the optimal value. And the set of values of variables that give the optimal value make up the optimal solution. These variables are called the decision variables. Here, these are x, y, and z. In order to solve a program using this algorithm, we must use the following steps. We do the first three steps once and repeat the fourth and fifth steps until we reach the optimal solution. We're now going to work through an example. Step 1. Convert into standard form. What does this mean? Firstly, all variables must be constrained to be non-negative. All our variables already are. However, if we were to have a variable that wasn't, for example w, we'd replace it with w1 minus w2. Add the constraints, w1 and w2 must be greater or equal than 0. Additionally, all constraints must have the form ax plus by plus cz must be less than or equal to n, where n is a non-negative constant. Here, the second constraint is bigger than or equal to. We have to change this to less than or equal to. We do this by negating all the coefficients and flipping the inequality. Lastly, the objective function must be a maximization, not a minimization, as in the example. Again, we can resolve this by negating all the coefficients. Step 2. Convert into a system of linear equations. For each constraint, we must change it from an inequality to an equality. To do this, we add a slack variable, representing the difference between the left and right-hand side of the equation. We add a new slack variable for each constraint. For the first constraint, we add s, and change the equation to an inequality. For the second constraint, we add t, and make that an equality too. Finally, we do the same for the third constraint and we add the slack variable u. We also have to rewrite the objective function. First, we set it equal to p, which represents the optimal value. We then set the whole equation equal to zero, moving all unknowns to one side of the equation, making sure that p is still positive. Step 3. Form a tableau. Using our set of linear equations, we can now form a tableau. For each variable, we have a column, as well as a final constants column. We then fill each row with the values of the coefficients in each equation, placing the values for the objective function in the bottom row. From this tableau, we can find a basic solution. To do this, we look for all columns that are cleared, meaning all entries in that column except for 1 equals 0. Here, this would be the columns for S, T, U and P. For the variable in that column, we calculate its value to be equal to the value of the constant in the same row over that variable's coefficient. For all the remaining variables, we assign their value to be 0. And this basic solution, x, y, and z equals 0, s equals 60, t equals 50, u equals 20, and p equals 0. Step 4. Select the pivot. First, we find the pivot column. This is the column with the most negative value in the bottom row. Next, we find the pivot row. To find the pivot row, we divide the constants in the last column by the corresponding value in the same row in the pivot column. This gives us the test ratio. The row with the smallest test ratio is our pivot row. The value at the intersection of the pivot column and pivot row, 15 in this case, is our pivot. Step 5. Use the pivot to clear the pivot column using row operations. Like before, clearing a column means all entries in that column except for 1 are equal to 0. 
So, first we must divide the pivot row by 15, the value of the pivot, so that it equals 1. Using this new pivot value of 1, we can now clear the pivot column using row operation, or what is also known as the Gauss-Jordan method. So, we do row 2 minus 5 row 1, Row 3 minus 3 row 1. And finally, row 4 plus 120 row 1. As mentioned before, we repeat steps 4 and 5 until there are no more negative numbers in the bottom row. As we can see, we still have minus 4, until we go back to step 4 where we must select a new pivot. Here, the first column is the pivot column. Again, we must find the test ratios for each row. Coincidentally, row 1 again has the smallest test ratio, and so our new pivot is 4 fifths. We go back to step 5, and once again we must clear the pivot column using the row operation. There are no more negative values in the bottom row, so we've solved our problem using the simplex algorithm in just two iterations. The solution is the current basic solution, which we can find as we did before. The columns for x, t, u and p are all cleared, and so we calculate each of their values. Columns y, z and s aren't cleared, so we assign them 0. So, we have now found our maximum value to be 500, where x equals 5, y equals 0, and z equals 0. There are two parts to the complexity of the simplex algorithm. First, the number of pivots or iterations the algorithm processes before it terminates. And second, the time the algorithm takes to perform one iteration of the algorithm. The total co time complexity is a dot product of these two functions. To work out the upper bound time complexity for time taken to perform one iteration, consider an m by n simplex tableau with m variables and m constraints. The algorithm first searches the bottom row for the most negative entry. In the worst case, the algorithm must search through all the m entries, giving order m time. Next, the algorithm searches for the pivot along the pivot column. The worst case time for this process is order n time, or the height of the tableau. Once the algorithm has got both values, it performs row operations. The pivot row will have just one division function performed on it, and one multiplication and addition function are performed on nearly every value in the tableau, giving us order 2, O, N, M time. From this analysis, we can see that the upper bound for one iteration of the simplex algorithm is order O times N times M. Klee and Minty were able to construct an example of a simplex algorithm which runs in 2 to the N-1 iterations. Although it may seem that in the worst case the simplex algorithm is, is exponential in its time complexity, it was shown in 2001 by Spielman and Tang that this algorithm has a polynomial time complexity for most inputs. We hope that this video was helpful in understanding the simplex algorithm. Thank you for watching.